fifth graders, I am starting an experiment. This will help us kind of see what happens in terms of the water cycle and evaporation. I have two cups on a balanced scale and you can see that they have the same mass of water. So they're each containing the same amount of water. I'm going to leave the cups out overnight without a top on the cup. So water is gonna to get to evaporate naturally. However, over one cup, I have a light that is shining. And this cup, this light, I'm gonna leave on overnight. And we're gonna take a look and see if anything has happened to the mass of the water after 24 hours. Well, this is kind of amazing. This is 12 hours later from the experiment. So I had left the cups open, so both cups could evaporate. But one of the cups had a light source over the top of it, and that light provides heat. And what happened to the water that was in the cup with the light? Well, it evaporated quite a bit faster and in a greater quantity than the regular cup. So let's kind of put this together with our concept of day and night, right? The sun provides energy in the form of light and heat. And when the sun is shining on the surface of the earth, that energy is transferred to the water and the water is evaporating much faster. So at night, not very much energy is transferred to the water and it does not evaporate very quickly. But during the day, when there's a lot of energy from the sun, the water will evaporate. I have two glasses. One is full of boiling hot water. It's very, very hot. And one is full of ice. And I'm gonna take the cup of ice and I'm gonna put it on top of the water that is very hot. Oh, and you can already see what's happening. The hot water is steaming, and when it reaches the cold glass that's full of ice, the water vapor is changing into liquid water. So it goes from liquid water, which is down here, hot. It evaporates because it's been boiling. This has been boiling hot water and it becomes a gas. But when it touches the cold surface of the glass above, the water vapor changes again into liquid water it condenses, ooh, and even dripped down. That was precipitation. This is part of the water cycle, right? Remember the evaporation, condensation, precipitation. All right, fifth grader, so we saw two great experiments. One, we saw how heat and light evaporate water more quickly. When we had two cups of water with the lids off, the one that had extra light and heat evaporated faster. So that part of the earth that's in daytime that is facing the sun, the water on that side of the earth is gonna evaporate faster during those that time than the part of the water that's in the darkness, okay? Then we saw condensation, we saw how cold surfaces, the warm water when, or the warm water vapor, when it touches a cold surface, it turns from a gas, water vapor, into a liquid. And that process is called condensation. So now let's put this whole thing together to the entire water cycle. Now we don't have to start in any one location. We can start anywhere on the water cycle, but I'm gonna start with liquid water. Now, the earth, this is a blow up globe 
and it basically looks like a blue ball because the earth is covered with liquid water. But it's not only covered with liquid water, the atmosphere, at least the troposphere, the first layer of the atmosphere, is full of water vapor. So the part of the earth that has daytime, the part that's facing the sun, has evaporation. So the sun's energy shines down on the liquid water and turns it from a liquid into a gas. That's because it, the energy from the sun is transferred to the liquid and it turns it from a liquid to a gas. It's just a phase change. It's still water, but instead of being liquid water, it is water vapor. It's water gas. Now that's not only happening in liquid water, that's also happening in plants. Do you remember when we put those plastic bag <coughs> over the leaves? We saw that the bags had water inside and the water had come from the leaves. They were breathing out water vapor through the stomata, those little holes in the leaves. So water is leaving through the plants through, and it's called transpiration, and it's evaporating from the water, and it's also drying out the soil. Sometimes if it's been rainy, and then the soil is waterlogged, a nice sunny day, and that water will evaporate. So the sun's energy causes the liquid water to evaporate and go into a gas. So it's changing its form, its state. Then as that water vapor rises and it's warmer, it rises into the atmosphere. And as it rises into the atmosphere, the atmosphere becomes cooler. And just as we saw in the experiment with the hot water under the cup of ice, that water vapor, when it gets cold, it starts to condense. It starts to go from a gas back to a liquid. And that is called condensation. When a cloud gets heavy enough, with full of enough water vapor that is condensed, then we have precipitation. Then that water comes down, it rolls back into the, to the liquid water, and the cycle starts again. So this is a cycle. It happens over and over again. The water that we are drinking today has been on Earth for billions of years. It has just been recycled. Every single time the water evaporates, anything that was in the water, whether it was salt or sugar or any other chemicals, are left behind. Only pure H2O, pure water, is the only thing that evaporates. So every single time the water goes through the water cycle, it becomes pure again. So what I'd like you guys to do is to write a little story. I want you to pretend that you are one drop of water, one molecule, and you can start anywhere on the water cycle. But I want to know what happens to you as you go through the water cycle. So you could be a little molecule of water just sitting on a lake, just about to be gobbled up by a fish, and then the sun makes you evaporate. And tell me what might happen to you as you go through the entire water cycle. Make it a little adventure. So in your science notebook, this is what I expect. I would expect you to go back to the front of your notebook in the table of contents, put number nine, water cycle. Mine is going to be on page 14. And then you're gonna to turn to page 14 and you're going to write water cycle. And the question is, and make sure you put the date, what is the water cycle? And you, I want you to answer that question. What is the water cycle? And this is where I would like you to write your story about how you go through the water cycle as one molecule of water. Okay, this is our last day on this unit. Although it's not like a clear cut. We are, our next unit is gonna be about the environment and living things, of course, need 
water. Living things need air from the atmosphere. Living things need soil from planet Earth. So we're going to be making a lot of connections to what we've been doing in this unit. All right. See you next week, cougars.